So, we were discussing about different uh, specification and modeling schemes and we saw uh, our very own popular finite set machines and it is I am just trying to recapitulate some of the things that we did and we also found that uh, we can try to capture time through time dotomata which is the finite set machine plus models of time. Okay. Here we can see that we add extra variables or some variables representing the times and uh, so at different points we can say that it will be in the wait state at least for 5 units of time then from here to here for example say this is a model of a answering machine. So, after the recording it will be recording and up to the 8 units of time after that it will stop recording if in between it becomes silent then obviously this will be reset. Okay. So, we can associate timing parameters also with our automata. Next we found that the problem with the automata normal finite set machine automata is that the number of states can explode can become very large. So, then we came to the concept of uh, uh, HCFSM before that CFSM is communicating finite set machines right. So, CFSM is communicating finite set machines where I can have one FSM here and another FSM here and they can communicate among themselves they can communicate among themselves right. When I add an H to this and call it an H CFSM then I bring in this H stands for hierarchy right. Now, such FSMs when I just take two FSMs and make them communicating FSM then obviously, the state explosion will not be contained because both of them will explode in state and as I compose them the number of states and the ages will also increase. Now, in order to avoid that we thought that uh, it would be advantageous if we can have hierarchical representation and accordingly we introduced the notion of state charts right state charts we had discussed. So, a typical finite set machine as is shown here can be contained into another one particular finite set machine which is a super state. So, we can have super states and sub states right in one machine and these are or states each of this is the state earlier I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 states, but here I am talking of one state and inside that state at the top level of hierarchy I have got one state, but as I decompose this then I will get 5 states right now I am sorry at the top level I am here I am getting 2 states one is this state S another state Z as I decompose I will decompose this state S into 5 sub states right. So, these are the sub states and these are the OR states it will be either in this state or in this state right in any one of these these are the OR states. Now, so we have seen the hierarchy mechanism after that we looked at the history mechanism right that along with our um, incorporation of the hierarchical representation we can also have some his some history nodes put in where uh, the history node will remember the state from which we are exiting right. 
So, we will exit from a particular state, we can exit from as was shown in the earlier slide, earlier diagram that I can exit from any one of these to the state z, which in a hierarchical representation I am showing here, right. But if I just make an exit through this state, it does not really imply tell me from which state I actually came out and if I have to return back where I should return back. Therefore, we can uh, incorporate the history state which will uh, remember in which state I was fine. Also as the diagram shows we had a entry state or start state that means, uh, this uh, bold dot shows that in which state we are first getting in. For example, here when we say that we are getting in here, when I enter S I am actually entering A. So, this is the default state unless something is said to the contrary. Okay. Now, the history node tells me where I should return back or where I was. So, it is also possible to combine the history and the default state like this. Initially say for example, this one that this one says that as I enter S, I enter A, A is the starting state. Okay. And if I exit say for example, from C the k event occurred. So, I came out from here as I go back, I will go back to C. right? history node tells me that. Now, when I combine these two, then also this can be denoted in this way. See state chart is a graphical language. So, whatever we are representing, we are representing in the form of diagrams and the semantics must be very clearly understood. Okay. Because from here, we will create an intermediate form which will be executed and we want to see what are the things that will result from my given specification. Okay. So, here is what you can do by uh, combining the history node and this and the default state. A major important thing that comes with uh, one very important thing that is inherent in state chart is hierarchy of course. I can take a complex problem and decompose it at different levels of complexity in a hierarchical manner. The second big advantage of state chart or state chart type of representation is representation of concurrency. As we can see again here, this was discussed in an earlier lecture that this is an answering machine representation where this is a super state answering machine. Now, this super state consists of two sub states line monitoring and key monitoring. Now, this line monitoring, line monitoring further consists of two states. One is line weight, weight on the line or process the line and that has got their own transitions. As you can see here, this is not an absolutely leaf level of state, L proc can be further decomposed okay, to give more details. Now, what is more important? in this diagram is the presence of this dotted line here, the presence of this dotted line here, which shows that this state and this state are concurrent. They can run simultaneously. So, this whole state is the on state and I have got the off state. right? So, either I am in the on state or I am in the off state. Fine. But when I am in the on state, these two states are and line monitoring is running as well as key monitoring is running, both of them are active. right? So, they are running concurrently and inside this line monitoring either it is in line weight or it is processing line. Inside key monitoring either it is waiting for a key press or it is processing a key. All right? So, concurrency was another important thing that we saw and we also saw that 
entering and uh, leaving the super states will be can be seen also from here that when for example here an off key is pressed then we actually come out suppose the key was being processed or something was being done will come out directly all right to the off state when the key off is pressed now i can exit when i exit from any exit from this state this internal state then i am actually exiting this entire state when i am being uh, the key off is being pressed then i am coming to the off state and this i am exiting this on state all right if i say that i am entering say because of key on i am entering here at this border that means where am i entering i am entering on both what does entering on both imply that means i am entering on this default state as well as this default state all these things were discussed right next uh, we also mentioned in an earlier context about timers so we have got a timer structure in state chart so for example if i draw a state like this and put in this sort of notation graphical notation and so this is one state and we put in say 20 millisecond here that means this is a timer now on an event a i can come out of this state let's call this state anything say s1 i can come out of this a and can go to some other state now when i am not drawing circles that means these are not the terminal states or these are not the atomic level of states if this is a composite state high high level i can further decompose it so on this a it will come out to state s2 maybe but if 20 millisecond elapses all right if 20 millisecond elapses and the event a has not taken place in between then the timer will go out and the time out signal will be generated okay and this time out signal will bring me to another state maybe s3 so in state chart along with any particular state at any level i can associate a timer which will allow me to express the time out requirement all right the implementation when this will be implemented as an embedded system designer when you will be implementing it that means whenever you enter this state it may enter this state from some other say suppose this was the default state so i enter here as soon as you enter here you set a timer to 20 millisecond and then start its activity here that is the semantics okay now we have already seen the answering machine thing uh, earlier now let us relook at that answering machine with the use of such timers let's revisit the answering machine we have also seen the answering machine um, in the through the time automata so compare this with the time automata that we are seeing vis a vis here now this being hierarchical looks much neater you can see that in the earlier one when we had i mean there were number of states over here and this talk and all those things uh, this was only one part of the um uh, answering machine example but as we go in in a hierarchical approach so we had shown that there are different components of it we had shown that there are two states line monitoring 
key monitoring then under that the key weight on the key and process the key etcetera right. Now, we are here just elaborating the process the line part only one part. So, as I said that this was not the terminal state in this diagram. So, this can be further decomposed and here is the further decomposition. Here is the further decomposition of processing the line uh, it is not coming clear a little uh, hazy it is uh, coming clear there. So, I can uh, explain. So, line process consists of uh, a state where I come in let us see whether we can explain understand the behavior from this as is being shown I am coming in here. I am there for 4 second if within 4 second now when did I come to this line process when there was some ringing right some signal came into the line because the earlier diagram had shown um, that I was trying I was coming to this L proc on ring when there was a ring I entered L proc when I entered L proc what happened when I entered L proc I gave 4 second if in between 4 second. So, this is a wait state ring is going on if somebody lifts off fine there is a talking and after that he returns the phone becomes dead otherwise 4 second has elapsed the person did not pick up. So, then there is a time out and it will play a text Mr. So and so is not here etcetera etcetera there will be a beep and then it will again it will enter the record state after the beep please uh, record your message after the beep. So, it enters this and the recording is going on the delay maximum length it is not the delay it is here it was a delay, but here it is the duration maximum duration it can record is 8 second he is recording two things can happen he has finished it goes there or there is a time out in either case it will give a beep that means what happened here he hanged he talked and then hanged the receiver and then it gave a beep and went dead otherwise it will be a time out whatever has been recorded will be given here. So, that is the application of the timer in state chart representation ok. Next we have to uh, now we are proceeding to understand the semantics of the whole thing. Now we are actually working on uh, and specification language state chart is a model and we have to have some language some tool through which we can graphically represent our model and that should be compiled and some executable form should be generated. In order that we can generate an unambiguous code the semantics must be very clear that is true for any programming language all right. Now, in order to understand that we will have to uh, introduce we will introduce you to a couple of notions first. You know if we look at a state any state machine there are two states and there is a transition between them. The transition is associated with some event and with some output or the reaction when this event occurs if you are in this state and some event occurs you do this action right. Along with that here we can also along with the event we can put in some conditions some data conditions or something that this is known as the guard condition we had mentioned that 
this is a guard condition that even if the event comes event uh, takes place if the condition is not satisfied this transition will not be enabled okay so there is a guard condition events now what are these events some clock pulse comes somewhere right events exist only until the next evaluation of the model what is the next evaluation of the model we'll come to that okay so there is an event occurring and that event will be assumed to be present an alarm has been set or a switch has been put on whatever that will be assumed to be true assumed to be present till the next evaluation of the model we will explain what this evaluation of the model is now these events can be either internally or externally generated the conditions as i said refer to values of variables now these variables will keep their value until they are reassigned that means this is more or less temporary uh, permanent because if i have got some variable assign the value 5 as long as i do not reassign it it will remain to be 5 all right so if i have got something like some state here and there is an edge which is taking you to another state and i say that there is some event e and some condition x is 5 then some action or reaction okay action now this event may be switch on event is say just make it uh, s w on some switch has been put on that event will be there till the next so that is an event an event like this the duration of this event the val this event is present till the next evaluation but this condition which is a variable till it is reassigned it will remain like that fine actions can be anything actions can be assignment of another val some variable maybe say y assigned 10 or maybe sw off that is another event anything it can happen say so here is an example service of some service of event has occurred it is not in the line process I mean it is not processing any call right now then service will become assigned 0 alright. So, that is what these items are alright what these standard items are what are their meanings now how is that evaluated the tool that is used for uh, that has been generated on state chart is known as state mate okay and state mate now by the way for those of you who are interested the state chart was proposed by david harrell okay and the idea was taken up and um, by and a commercial version came out through a company who named the product as statement i think the name of the company was ilogics or something all right the ilogics most probably if i if my memory doesn't betray me it was ilogics and then uh, the name was statement so what we want to know that what is the semantics of the statement execution. First thing we will have to in order to understand the semantics we have to answer the questions how are the age levels evaluated ok. There are three phases please note down if required and try to understand this. First 
the effect of external changes on events and conditions are evaluated all right we first check first step is whether what is this has there been any change i check that all right the set of transitions to be made in the current step remember remember that in this diagram i am showing only one state there are multiple state transitions events are occurring so i have to collect all the events conditions and see which all are enabled okay that is the first step the second step the set of transitions to be made in the current step and the right hand side of assignments are computed which of these i'll be computing then the third step is transitions become effective that means my present state now becomes the next state now why is this important why is this important for example let me take a let me take an example a hypothetical case say i am in a and state this is an and state right i am in this state right so and inside this there are two states i came here and this transition is on event e1 condition c1 some action a1 all right and here this is again um uh, say event e2 condition c2 action a2 maybe and here event e1 readable or let me write rewrite e1 condition c1 maybe action a3 it's possible now what happened in between is e1 has happened and c1 is true then out of all these ages right now i am in step 1 i have to evaluate and find out that this is active this is active right that's why there's a first phase then the second phase will be selecting which one so i'll be doing both of them but before that so before the transition i have to compute what is this a1 what is this a2 and the third state is my present state will be this one and the and this one both of these will be simultaneously transited to okay so this is the three phase thing that i am talking about then that will be in the a1 ex, the question is that what if a1 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 is enabling e2 that will take place in the second step but uh, according to the statement uh, three step procedure in the second step we we'll take the action and then we will go to the next step second step i am not taking the action the action is being computed in the third step let's see here i'll show you some examples say the set of transitions to be made in the current step are computed which are the ones that i have to which are the transitions that i have to do then the transitions become effective transitions become effective and variables obtain new values that is coming in the third step and then i am again cycling back to this one okay separation into phase 2 and 3 enables resulting unique determinate behavior that's why i am not allowing them exactly the question that you are asking that in that case i am not too sure as to what will which one will take place first that that can generate into a race condition right that will generate a race condition so i am not allowing that we are just holding the results yes we are 
assigning it. Now, so with that, let's take an example. Let's keep it in front of me, so that now let's say uh, those of you who do C programming, a favorite thing that you often find is a swap problem, right? Swapping variables. So suppose I am doing some swap and you have to understand what this is meaning. I am just drawing according to the no notations that I have already described. Now here, some event E leads to the action A assigned B. All right, and the same event E leads to the action B assigned A. All right. Now, what will happen? Initially, I entered here with some action, say some action, no even nothing, A was 1 and B was 0. So, A was 1 and B was 0, right. Now, I am here. Now, event E has occurred. Let us look at our so the extent uh, the effect of the external change is event e Condi there are no conditions for the sake of simplicity so two things will happen here the set of transitions to be made in the current step are evaluated both these transitions will have to be evaluated and the right hand side of the assignments are computed that means here what i am having is a prime is getting B and here B prime is getting A all right internally. In phase 3 transitions become effective variables obtain new values therefore, A will get in phase 3 a will get A prime and B will get B prime. Okay. Therefore, as a result actually they are swapped. Right? If I do this then actually they are swapped, but normal that we usually do with pointers and all those things. Otherwise, if I just do A assign B and B assign A then the swapping is not taking place. So, here that is the reason why these two are separated. Otherwise, what could have happened? The result would be indeterminate depending on which one takes place first and might be these are concurrent. So, they are being executed by two separate processors which are of different speed. So, anything can happen right. By separating these two out, I can have a functional approach that the same result will take place what is intended. Okay. So, with that we have understood the statement semantics. Um, in a single phase environment if I had done this what would have happened let us see the same thing if I just had done this by in a single phase what would have happened what would have happened the same thing here not this where did I keep it this one what would have happened if I had done it in a single phase. So, A was 1 B was 0. 
So, in the single phase A would be 0 and B would be 0 right or A would be uh, B would be 1 and A would be 1 depending on the order in which they are going on. So, before concluding I will explain therefore, the semantics here the steps are this diagram will explain you the step how the execution is taking place. We are starting with some status say here the state status means the state of the whole thing. So, you are starting with this we are going through one state step. So, what happens first the step means execution of a uh, say status and step status and step like that we go three times. The status is the value of all variables plus set of events plus the current time. Okay. Now, step is execution of the three phases all the three phases that constitute the step 1, 2, 3 then the new state comes. All right. So, when I am in state status this diagram tells me phase 1 I do first then phase 2 then phase 3 and then I come to the new state. Okay. Other implementations do not have these three phases, uh, but statement implementation actually does it the simulator works in these three phases and thereby ensures determinate result. Right. The events now what I was meaning when I said that the events leave till the next evaluation of the model. What do I mean by the next evaluation of the model? The event that occurred say the event that switch on that took place will remain till I come to the next status. So, for all these three steps this event however transient will be assumed to be there. All right. So, that is the meaning of till the next evaluation of the model. Okay. 